first time I saw a crown of thorn starfish, I really didn't believe how painful they were. Just touching one, just brushing up against it, pokes your skin with these sharp spines, and there's some sort of toxin and poison in there that makes those wounds just rage with pain. It's a blind mouth surrounded by thorny arms. The crown of thorn starfish eats nothing but live coral. Sometimes the first thing that tells you there's crown of thorns in the area is when you first get in the water and you look down and you see white patches on the coral. What could that be? Maybe it's coral bleaching with some colonies dying and some not. As you get closer, what you see is that some colonies have white patches on them. And on a big tabletop, the white patch might sweep across a table, a table that might have spent 50 years growing that big. And right at the front end of that white patch is a big crown of thorn starfish in the middle of its meal. Now they're a natural threat. They've always been crown of thorn starfish in the Pacific. And they tend to do outbreaks. That is, be fairly uncommon for many years and all of a sudden be very, very numerous on reefs. On the Great Barrier Reef, they start off at the northern end in an outbreak and that outbreak sweeps down to the south periodically. A big crown of thorns can eat a lot of coral. It leaves behind coral that, if it's healthy, can regrow. But if it isn't healthy, if the coral is stressed by sedimentation or too much algae, then the coral will die. And so the crown of thorns can be a major threat to the survival of coral reefs around the world. The real question for the crown of thorns is how can this natural disturbance be balanced with the human-made disturbance we're doing with reefs. There are times and places where the reef is so stressed by the other things that we're doing to it that it can no longer take a crown of thorns infestation. That's when crown of thorns becomes a real problem.